My name is Pro, and we have 20 old school RuneScape plugins to get through today, so let's get started. Alright, so first up on the list in no particular order, although this is one of my favorite plugins, it's going to be Inventory Setup. So Inventory Setup basically lets you save any gear setup that you want to save, either for Slayer, for bossing, for farming, for fishing, doesn't matter what it is, you can save it, and then as long as you click on these two, I, I just click on these two, that's what I know, but you click on these two things right there, you can color code them, and then whenever you hit view setup, it shows you your entire setup, and then whenever you open your bank, it shows, it basically organizes everything to your setup, so you can just get out whatever you need, and as you get it out, it will turn it from red to a gray background to let you know that you have it in your inventory or equipped. So that is very, very helpful. If I wanted to do a birdhouse run, I just click on birdhouse, it's right there. And whenever you hit the little back arrow, it makes your bank normal again. His spory stuff's there. Let's say I don't have any super combat potion threes. So let's say I only have fours or twos. Well, that's what the toggle fuzzy is for. So right now I have zero, but if I put toggle fuzzy on, it will show all four variants of the different combat potions that I have. One, two, three, and four. And it will do that for basically anything. It will even do it for the crystal teleport seats. Anything that has a number, it will basically do it to you. You just have to hit toggle fuzzy and it will show you exactly how many that you have of all the variants. So right now, let's say I'm doing star mining um let's say i didn't have this stuff so it would highlight it red and then i could just click 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 and it would put it in my inventory in the right spot or you have to put it in the right spot but it's going to show that you have it in your inventory and then like with the crystal teleport seed um let's say i don't have any in here we toggle fuzzy it shows me which ones i do have I know a lot of people like to use the other inventory setup, but this has just been my favorite since I started back playing about a year ago, and I've just always stuck with it. It's actually one of, like, it's an essential plugin for me because I cannot remember every single thing I have to bring to all these different places. If I, if I have Slayer Wyverns, you know, it's right there. I don't have to think about what I have to bring, how many prayer pots, how many of what I have to bring. It's just right there. If I want to go, let's say, to the Dagonoth layer, this would be the setup I would use. If I want to go kill Kurask, I don't remember what I need to kill them, so I just click on that and everything is there. Oh yeah, I forgot. I need to use a leaf-bladed um, weapon to harm them. But uh, you don't have to think about anything and the inventory just pops up. It's really good. I love the inventory setup plugin and it is definitely one of my favorites. They also have things like uh, if you get more into it, they have sections. So you can create a section and then put like, let's say I created a Slayer section and I would just put all my Slayer stuff in there. They also have it where you can import new sections or new inventory setups. So if you switch computers or you need to share something with your friends, maybe your raid group, then you would just export your setup and then send it over to them and then they download it into their inventory setup and they have the setup for the raid or whatever you're going to do. Next up on the list in no particular order, even though I do like this one as well, it's NPC Aggression Timer. So you see this little yellow line on the ground and it's going to go a pretty long ways. Well, this basically means as long as you stay in this yellow line, the NPCs will not be aggressive towards you. So if you're doing a Slayer task or you know something like that where the enemies are going to be aggressive towards you, as long as you stay within this line, they will not attack you after 10 minutes. So if I go and I step out of this line, it's going to put a little thing down here and it's going to put a time it's going to put a timer down here and that timer whenever it hits zero that means that the npcs will not be aggressive towards you as long as you stay in the yellow line it's really helpful especially if you're doing a slayer task and maybe you know there's like four or five mobs and they would all attack you and it's multi-combat maybe you just want to kill one at a time and only have one attack you 
So then you would basically just stand in the yellow line for 10 minutes and wait it out. And then you could go in and none of them would attack you. So you could just attack one on one. It's also really helpful maybe if you're doing crabs like ammonite crabs or sand crabs. You know how long you have that the NPCs are going to be aggressive towards you and attack you. And then you don't have to do anything. So you know exactly how long that is. And then whenever the timer runs out, you just run until you see the edge of the yellow line and you step out and then you step back in and you will be, or the sand crabs or ammonite crabs would be aggressive towards you again. And here at number three, we are going to have the Watson clue tracker, which is going to basically tell us exactly what clues we need to give to Watson. And once you give Watson one of each of the clues, then he will give you a master clue. And Watson can be found in this building right here. But basically the plugin, if you hover over your clues, it says clue scroll easy, Watson needs easy, medium, hard, elite. And then he will give you the master clue. So you can talk to him, blah, 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 blah. And then you say, I have something for you. Hand over easy clue. You hand over the clue to Watson, thank you, and then, oh, he doesn't take beginner clues, so just easy, medium, hard, and elite, but the Watson clue tracker will keep track of that so that you don't have to run down here every single time and check. You will just be able to look inside of your bank, pull out an easy, medium, hard, or elite clue, and it will tell you exactly what you need to give to him in order to get a master clue. All right, so now we are at Nexus Menu Maps number four, and all you have to do is go to your house, and as long as you have a Nexus portal built, you will open up your teleport menu, and it will basically give you a map of the world, and all you have to do is click on each place, and it will show you exactly where the teleports are, and you can just click on the teleport and go, or you just hit show map or uncheck the box, and it'll show you your regular teleports. But I just think it's a cool little add-on right here that you can just click the places on the map and it'll show you exactly where the teleports are. And the next thing I would download is probably going to be Tile Packs at number 5. Tile Pack basically just gives you a bunch of different Tile Pack lists. And if you go through here and like let's say I want to do Barrows, I would just hit the little plus symbol and it would give me the Tile Pack for Barrows. So all I have to do is go to Barrows and it will be there. For me, one of the only things that I really use it on is the Hollow Sepulchre because it just it gives you all of the the right places that you need to click on but i'm sure i would use it a lot more in the future whenever i start raiding more definitely for the inferno you got garador um cox zilliana all right so the next one on the list is number six we have menu entry swapper you should already know about this, but if you don't, then you're going to know right now. And it's amazing. You should 100% download this. If you don't download anything else, definitely download this. So with this, you have item swaps and PC. Basically, what this does is, so the if I click on this, it will say consume, which will teleport me to the grand tree. And if I shift click on it, then I can sw swap the left click to use and then now whenever I click it it's use and then if I shift click it again I can go back to reset and then it will teleport me back to the grand tree and you can basically do that with every single item or NPC in the game so like with the mythical cape if I click it right now, I'm going to teleport immediately. That doesn't normally happen, but it's because I switched it. So if I shift click the cape and then I go to reset, it's going to change it back to where. And then if I shift click it again and then hit teleport, then it's going to be a teleport. All I have to do is click the cape and it's an automatic teleport. And that is like one of the reasons I love a menu entry swapper, just because you can do so many different things with it. One of my favorite things is going to be the fairy ring. And if you normally click on it, it would be configure, but I have changed it to last destination. So all I have to do, if I'm fishing for Ambuans or something, all I have to do is click on the fairy ring one time and then it teleports me to the destination. And you can, you basically, like I was saying, you can do 
this with just about anything in the game. So if you just want to click something and like the, even the fish barrel, if you have a fish barrel and you want to one click empty it into your bank, then you can change it to do that. This next one coming in at number seven, a lot of people know about and it is door kicker. Basically, what you're going to do is kick open doors instead of pushing them open. <laughs> and it's really, it's really entertaining. It's really neat. But you're just going to go to the plugin and type in door kicker. It's going to be right here. And then you can kick doors. So, yeah, this is going to be super helpful. I love this one. At number eight, we have chat filter. And with chat filter, it basically lets you it condenses like it won't say the same thing twice so the door seems to be stuck number three that means it's it would have popped up three different times but it collapses it into one line and then just puts a number beside it and all you have to do for this is go to chat filter and then collapse game chat and have that checked and it will collapse the game chat you can do it for player chat clan chat friend chat whatever you want to do but it's really helpful to have the chat collapsed into a really easy thing to read. At number nine, we're going to have 117 HD. This is basically going to make your client a little more HD. This is what it normally looks like. And this is with HD or 117 HD on. Now with this, you're going to want to have some settings. I do my draw distance at 90. I turn off my V-Sync. And then... Yeah, so basically these are all my settings, and it, it runs at a pretty good FPS, I would say. But with this, you can mess with the contrast, the saturation, the brightness. You can do flashing effects, shadows. You can basically do anything you want with the 117 HD. It's not as good as HDOS, but it is, I mean, it's it's a dramatic difference, I would say. Next up on the list is going to be the GPU plugin. I think this comes with Rune Light. If 117 might be like too much to handle, or maybe you just don't like the style of it. So you would basically turn this off and then turn the GPU on. See with it off, everything is kind of, it's a little like, eh. But then whenever you turn it on, it smooths everything out. And some people just like the style of this better, which I'm not going to lie, like I do like it a lot. But this is pretty much if you're looking to play the normal game and you want the normal graphics, but just a little bit boosted, you know, a little bit smoother, the GPU plugin definitely helps. You can do your draw distance all the way up, your FPS. Um, I would turn off V-Sync and then you're good to go. If you don't know about this one already, it's going to be the regular. You're just going to type in regular rune light and you're going to hit settings. And then on this, you're going to go down to notification center. And here you're going to be able to turn on different notifications. So like if I wanted it to, if I was fishing and I wanted it to flash whenever I stopped fishing, then I would turn this to flash for two seconds or flash until canceled. And then you can change the notification flash color and it'll basically turn the whole screen that color and then flash it on and off that way that you know, okay, I need to click the next fishing spot. Or if you're like me and you don't want the flashiness, but you just want like a sound because you're usually doing something else and RuneScape is behind three different web pages or something. So basically you're going to hit enable tray notification and whatever your person stops fishing or stops doing what they're doing, you're going to get like that little do -do -do, like little beep thing you would get whenever you normally get a notification on your computer. And at number 12, we have a banked XP. So with this plugin, basically you're just going to come up here and pick whatever skill you want to train in your bank. So let's say you have a bunch of bones then you would hit prayer and it's going to show you exactly how much XP you have banked and then like what level you can get to and all that. And let's say I'm going to go to crafting because I have a lot of gems. It's going to show me, okay, you have all these crafting gems and you're going to be able to go from level 85 to 87 and you're going to have this much XP. And if you want, if you let's say I'm not using this wool, so I'm going to ignore the item. 
and then it's going to take the XP off. So like, let's say I don't want to use any of these. I'm not going to use these. I just want to see how much XP I would get from cutting gems, specifically just cutting gems. Okay. So now we're at that point. I would get 281k XP. That would get me to level 87. This one is a huge one coming in at number 13, and it's going to be Entity Hider. So Entity Hider, basically, if you're doing Winter Todd, if you're doing Guardians of the Rift, if you're doing Star Mining, anything with a lot of people, if you start lagging or doing anything like that, you would basically go to Entity Hider, and you can hide almost everything in the game. If you want to hide your teammates' thralls, you can hide that. If you want to hide actual people, you can do that too. If you want to hide the NPCs, you can do that. Let's try to find someone real quick, and then I'll try to hide them because I can't find anyone. Okay, so here's a guy right here. I'm going to follow him. If I, t if I turn on hide other, it makes him disappear. And basically, you can do that whenever there's a bunch of people around, and it'll make your FPS way just in astronomically better. Um, hide other 2D, that means it's going to hide the text above their head. Uh, hide NPC, hide MC 2D, um, that's going to hide their text. You can hide the projectiles, hide random events of other people. It's really good for uh, just keeping things out of your view distance. If it's blocking your view or anything like that, it's really good to keep it out. All right, and coming in at number 14, we have Essence Pouch. Essence Pouch is just going to be like downloaded and it's going to show you a little number beside your Essence Pouches and it's going to show you exactly how many Essences are in the pouches. Sometimes it does get messed up, but it it is very helpful whenever you're doing Guardians of the Rift or you're runecrafting to know that you got the Essence out of your pouch and runecrafted them. And at number 15, we have Wasted Bank Space. This one is going to tell you every single item that can be put somewhere else other than your bank. So if I come over to my bank, it's basically going to put a little yellow triangle beside stuff. So like I can put this in my house. It's telling me, okay, you can put this in your house, this wasted bank space. And it's a really good app if you struggle with bank space. See like all of these seeds, those can go in seed containers, all with the, the farming guild. I probably don't need all these spice things, but yeah. So it's basically just a way to clean up your bank, and it's very helpful if you are running out of bank spaces. Number 16, we have Prestige. I actually do not have this one downloaded, but if you want to download it, it seems like a really fun plugin. So basically at level 92, it will reset your level to level one and then you basically level from one to 99 but you're really only leveling 92 to 99 it says that it resets your level and doubles your xp but i don't think it like actually doubles it it probably evens it out to where you can go from one to 99 and it seem good <laughs> but i would imagine this plugin would be really nice if you were like on the grind to get a 99 and you really needed some extra encouragement, well, this would tell you like, oh, you got a bunch of levels up. So it would give you that dopamine hip and hopefully let you continue on to get that 99. You know, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully someone will try it and let me know. Number 17, we have Thrall Helper. This is going to be another one that I can't really show you, but basically Thrall Helper will put a box down here. And it will show you, it will remind you to summon your thrall so that you always have your thrall up and you don't go 5kc without summoning it like I do sometimes. Alright, so coming in at number 18, we have Herbie AFK. You do have a Herblore Helper or a um, Herbie, whatever these guys are called. You have a helper already in your rune light thing, but Herbie AFK just makes it a little AFK-er. The regular one gives you these little markers on the ground, but the AFK one gives you a line directly to the thing. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't have it, but it is a little bit more helpful. And that's enough for me to download it because I just, I like the line. It makes it seem just a little bit easier with the line and both of them. But yeah, so... Hopefully, uh, this helps you do herbivore better. Coming in at number 19 and super useful is the Wilderness Player Alarm. 
So this one is going to tell you exactly whenever someone is in the radius and it's going to send off an alarm. I do a flashing color and I usually make it red. This will start off at like 15, but I go ahead and increase it all the way to 30 just because I want to know if there's going to be anyone in my vicinity. Now you can probably like change this to whatever fits wherever you're training at in the wilderness. I just always like to be high on alert, so... I always like to be on high alert, so I'm just going to keep it at 30. And anytime anyone comes into a radius of 30 from me, then it will sound the alarm and flash the color and tell me that I need to teleport away. So it is very helpful if you are trying not to die. And last but not least, we have the Barbarian Assault plugin. This plugin is basically, I don't want to do a game of Barbarian Assault. So please don't make me do that. But um, basically what this is going to do is it's going to tell you exactly what the people called out for you. And it's going to tell you what you need to call out for them. And it's going to give you a timer to tell you when you need to call it out. So it, just, it gives you a bunch of helpful information in Barbarian Assault. If you're going to do it, go ahead and download the add-on and it'll just make your life a whole lot easier. And if you want to know why I only mine stars at work now, click on this video right here.